What's going on everyone? This is Ace with Gaming Hookup. I hope you're all having a fantastic week. By the way, we're giving away Call of Duty World War II Control Freaks for either Xbox One or PS4. Follow the link in the description to enter the giveaway. It's super easy. All you gotta be is subscribe. And remember, turn the notifications on and like the video. It does help us grow. So guys, it's been exactly two weeks since Call of Duty World War II came out. And well, it's been a rough and rocky start for this Call of Duty year. That's actually putting it kind of lightly actually, isn't it? The game launch was horrific to say the least, plagued with connection issues, unbalanced guns, still is, and well, just overall tons of bugs and issues that should not exist in a AAA game that took three years to develop and had three betas, guys, three different betas. Now, if the game had been launched, let's say, by a brand new independent developer, I think we could understand and look past these issues as they get worked out, but it's unacceptable how Sledgehammer Games has handled the launch. Some people are saying this is a tradition for all Call of Duties that are released. That's bullshit. I mean, there's never been a Call of Duty release this bad. Now, one thing I will agree on, though, is pretty much the last three or four Call of Duties end up running smooth and pretty much perfectly right as soon as another Call of Duty is about to be released, which is ridiculous in my opinion. They should run correct the day the game comes out. Many years of development should not result in complete and utter trash. So obviously, connection issues were one of the biggest problems with the World War II launch. Many players weren't able to connect and play a game for three or even four hours, some players even longer. With everyone being extremely excited for World War II, this was a huge letdown. The hype was so big and Sledgehammer Games just didn't deliver. Well, fast forward two weeks later, well, the connection issues are even worse in many ways. For example, when you're partied up at the end of matches, you get a black screen. The matches start with the, without allowing you to check your after action report or edit classes. Other issues, for example, but obviously not limited to, connecting to international players. This is a big one, guys. What I mean by this is, let's say, for example, you're in New York. You should not be connecting to someone that's in Brazil. There's a lot of examples of this on Twitter, by the way, if you don't believe me. Other issue, issues, I should say, uh, one of them is being uh, a pretty annoying one spawning in games with no gun in your hand or you're delayed the spawn is delayed by like 10 or 20 seconds where you're spectating other players this, this is annoying it's straight up garbage it shouldn't be happening so other issues like there's a black screen when you obtain or unlock rewards or challenges during the game uh, that's just to name a few man it's just very annoying it makes you not even want to play the game it makes you not want to grind for those uh, challenges and camos and you know the contracts and all that stuff it just shouldn't be going on man I'm really not not sure what is so difficult for a multi-billion dollar gaming organization to get their multiplayer right. I mean, come on. They've been making the same exact style game since November of 2007. That's 10 years. 10 fucking years, guys. Now, if you're sitting there thinking Sledgehammer really doesn't know how to launch a AAA game, well, you're right. So far, they've definitely shown that they're not very capable of doing a good job, especially with the 1.05 patch that was released on November 10th, hitting guns with nerfs and buffs and pretty much ignoring any requests that players had that actually affect the quality of the gameplay. One request that has thousands of tweets to date and people are still going on and on about is we need more hardcore game modes like Kill Confirmed. And speaking of hardcore, let's be sure to turn Ricochet on, Sledgehammer. Teammates need to stop trolling and killing you for no reason. Reason, especially when you're on a 24 gun streak that happened to me last night by the way and it's it's very upsetting team killing and hardcore can definitely be an accident but when the same teammate kills you three four or five times that's when you know they're fucking with you and it needs to be stopped ricochet bullets uh something that infinity war definitely got right in infinite warfare you shoot a teammate you die not them and you shouldn't get kicked from the lobby either so i really didn't like how black ops 3 did it kill a teammate uh, after three times i believe is what it was and you got kicked out of the lobby that kind of sucked as well well so i think uh, infinity war did a good job with the ricochet bullets if you shoot a teammate you die not the teammate if you fuck up you should be the one that should die not the teammate and it counts as a death too i mean come on sledgehammer you're killing us you're killing us man come on there's so many issues in the game i'm not going to be able to cover all of them but there's definitely a few more that i want to touch on so let's get into skill-based matchmaking obviously they've implemented skill-based matchmaking that was a huge failure in advanced warfare we all know it we 
all know that to be true, guys. People do not want to play in public matches and have to get all sweaty and have to go try hard and use their best guns every single game. It's it's annoying, it's boring, it's tiring. This is a casual game for most people. A game where you should be able to hop on and have a few hours of fun gameplay. Whether you just got off of work, whether you just got out of school, whether you're a kid, or whether you're an adult. It doesn't matter. We, we just want to have fun. And Sledgehammer keeps getting confused by this because they're in bed with so many clans and so many people out from the competitive community. They don't even know what they're doing anymore. Are they doing it for the fans or are they making a competitive game? But even those people in bed with them, they agree that skill-based matchmaking shouldn't even exist in public matches. That should be something that stays in game battles. This one's an easy fix though. Take it out of the game. Take skill-based matchmaking out of the game, Sledgehammer. Easy resolution here, guys. Oh yeah, let's not forget about the out-of-map glitches that are popping up. Almost every map has an out-of-world map glitch. This is very serious and needs to be fixed as soon as possible. These idiots at Sledgehammer game, they are still working on connectivity issues and they want to drop their stupid supply drop, pay-to-win bullshit next week. But they have to fix more important things. Like now, not tomorrow. So you're a multi-billion dollar organization organization Activision. Sledgehammer, you've been pretty much given unlimited funds. Hire more people to work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week to get this game perfected. We deserve it. And get this game straightened out. So far, it's absolutely disgusting. Alright guys, last thing I want to touch on, I know you've been hearing me rant for a minute here. I want to talk about the final kill cam. This bronze award nightmare bullshit they came up with. It's a complete joke in my opinion. My question for Sledgehammer Games is, how does the game actually figure out who to choose? Why are guys that are 3 and 20 getting the bronze award every single game almost every single game i play it's confusing i noticed that last night i had a game where i had two quad feeds and went 39 and 2 but my kills were not chosen to be the final best kill of the game or whatever you call it it was a sniper that hard scoped and got two kills a double kill so how did that outbeat my two quad feeds the bronze award to me seems like another participation trophy from Activision and Sledgehammer Games. Not always, but most of the time it seems like that. It seems like the player who did really bad gets the best moment of the game. So in my opinion it's kind of like a participation trophy. Hey bud, good job, you got this great, great moment in the game. Check it out. We're going to throw it in everybody's face that you suck. Obviously everything's going to get worked out in given time. But will it be in time is the question. Will it be before people actually give up altogether on World War II? I mean, how long can we really go on with these problems? On a final note, guys, I think if Sledgehammer Games actually listens to the fan community and not the competitive community, this game can still be a huge success, hands down. It has all the things that are required to be a successful Call of Duty. But the last two weeks has been ball-wrenching for all Call of Duty fans across the globe. Well, guys, that's Call of Duty World War II two weeks later. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button. What are you waiting for? Make sure you also slap the hell out of that like button. It does help us grow as a channel. And as always, it's been a pleasure, guys. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out. Look at that. Beast mode, baby. Watch this.